Guess who just got trampled? Guess who just got trampled? Guess who just got trampled? This guy. This guy. Guess who just got trampled? This guy. This guy. I can't believe we won that game. <laughs> How's it going everybody? Thank you guys so much for clicking on my video. I really do appreciate it. Welcome back to another Magic the Gathering deck list. Um, this one is going to be Golgari. I call it Golgari Mutate, but it's more like a Golgari mid-range uh, that just ha has some few uh, mutating factors in it, which makes it really, really strong. But before we dive into it and start talking about the deck list here and then get into some gameplay footage, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, be sure to do so because we are on the road to a thousand and I do want to accomplish this goal by the end of the year, guys. We're really, really close to doing that. We're actually on pace to hit about 900 uh, by the end of the year, but if we could just up that pace by a little bit and get to that thousand before the end of the year, I'd really, really appreciate it. You guys have been absolutely killing it with the subscription. So thank you so much if you've already subscribed to the channel. Also, you'll be notified for any time I post a video, which is honestly a little sporadic but we do post a couple videos every single week so be sure to hit that notification bell and subscribe to the channel for future notifications when we go live with videos all right so let's talk about the deck and then jump into some gameplay footage and then at the end we'll wrap it up with some final like thoughts on the deck and how it played and honestly this deck was insanely good it worked out so well um and it's super strong right now in the current meta with the the post bannings of uh, omnath and everything this deck is absolutely a powerhouse let's so uh let's go ahead and kick it off with talking about some removal spells that we have here uh blood chief's thirst this is a new zendikar rising card that everyone's been playing uh lately because it does have a lot of options um and options are always good um so it's not only just a one drop destroy target creature or convert a cost of two or less it also hits any planeswalkers or creatures of any cost if you want to kick it for an additional three so a ton of value there uh so we're going to go ahead and run four of those the only downside to that is it uh is that it's a sorcery speed card but no 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 matter guys this card is insane it's absolutely powerful and it should be ran in almost every black deck that has removal spells our other removal spell is Mythos of Nethroi. This one is pretty sweet because if we spend a, sp uh, a very specific set of mana on this card, um, which is the Abzan mana, uh, we can actually cast this on any permanent on the field. So we can destroy anything we choose. If we get, you know, Banishing Light hits us or if there's something odd that we need to get rid of off the battlefield that we can normally typically hit, Nethroy is the way to go about that and the way we get to play Nethroy is we get to actually run the in Indatha I think that's how you say it Triome this right here is the Abzan Triome so we're going to run four of those but we'll get to that later I just wanted to mention that because you'll notice that you do need the Abzan colors to hit that um, particular clause on the card up next we have two clean the dust this is another uh this is a tech card uh to help us against like um rogues or any sort of mill deck which is basically running rampant in the meta at the moment so you get to actually use this card repetitively using it uh, as an escape cost just exiling a few cards from your graveyard you get to reoccur this card over and over which is you get to gain three life or draw a card depending on what it is you want to exile from somebody's graveyard so very easy to reuse especially in the meta currently so very good card for the deck it's a good way to generate value in your deck constantly once you uh, kind of get locked out. Up next, we have four Shamblers. This card right here is awesome, guys. It actually worked out really, really well. I do have a replacement card idea for this one, so be sure to stick around at the end for this one. But um, this is a great one drop. Anytime it's targeted by a spell or ability, you create another 1-1 one, one insect token. So if somebody wants to remove this off the battlefield, it's just going to create another 1-1 one, one token for us to eventually mutate onto down the road anyways. So, very, very strong card. Also, if they target another um, creature that you control with a 1-1 on it, it um, also generates a 1-1 insect token. So, hard to get rid of, guys. Very hard to get rid of. Up next, we have Scavenging Ooze. Scavenging Ooze is a another really great card specifically for this meta because of all the millage that's happening. You get to exile cards from graveyards, and you get to put 1-1 counters on things. So, 
not only is this good against the meta of mill but it's also good against the meta that's fighting against mill like ourselves if somebody were to use a scavenging ooze on us and hit our cling to dust from our graveyard we won't be able to reuse it so scavenging ooze is a, a really really great card right now as far as the decks that are being ran scavenging ooze it just fits really really well right now in the current meta up next we have the kazandu mammoth we have what are the two of these two of these um so basically this is just in here more uh more so for the land but if we do have no creatures in hand and we need something to mutate onto we got the mammoth there for it so it's a nice little dual side card and then we have what i found out was almost the mvp of this deck is the awakening this card works so well in a heavy heavy creature based deck like this one where um you know we have a really nice curve of a one drop a two drop a three drop you know we have all kinds of uh you know we have a really nice curve where we kind of go up the ladder with our creature costs this will be uh be able to bring back all of those creatures in one big play to end the game so it's it's super powerful it's something to absolutely look into if you're going to run any sort of creature deck that runs black um this is the card this is where it's at this is an mvp for sure here's where we get to our mutate guys this is where the mutate starts to happen gem razor we're going to run three gem razors this card is incredible again this is just another meta beatdown right now there's teferi's tutelage out there that's just running rampant kind of destroying hands or, i'm sorry destroying your deck um i've been running into a lot of like um artifact decks uh you know that are solely purely artifacts gem razor smashes all of those things which is really awesome once you mutate you get to destroy target artifact or enchantment which is really really good right now and then we have migratory great horn this one we're going to run four of because i think ramping is a little more important you want to be able to get the mana out whenever you need it a lot of times if you're if you're struggling for mana great horn is a really good way to fix that every time you mutate onto it you get to find a uh, basic land and put it onto the battlefield so great horn is fantastic and we finally get to use nissa shadows uh, this one is uh pretty cool it's not extremely strong but in this deck it works out really really well so basically it's got a landfall where you know you plus a loyalty field that land hits the battlefield it has the same thing as the old nissa where it creates a three three and on taps a land but it goes back to being a land at the end of the turn um what we're really trying to shoot for here if if ever you could pull this off you know is drop the nissa down drop a land down and then you can minus five bringing back um a creature from the graveyard which is most likely what we want to be doing uh, so very very strong uh minus five there uh this is the card though that we're trying to get back consistently this card this is the mvp or this is the true mvp of the deck so we awakening came out to be uh one of those cards where it kind of took us by surprise on how well it did i knew how good poker notes would be in this deck so uh this is the card that i wanted to build around um this is a creature card that basically comes into the battlefield as a zero zero but with six plus one one tokens on it and one damage is dealt to it it just loses the tokens it doesn't actually get affected by that battle so if we are stronger than our opposing creature and we take damage it does kind of stink because we just lose those tokens and it becomes a weaker creature but if it gets hit by something with death touch it doesn't actually die it just loses the tokens also it fights creatures it has a built-in fight ability and it has an escape cost where you can bring it back from the graveyard with 12 one one counters on it so card is busted it's really really good um i feel like it's it's finally having its time in the new meta to to shine so a lot of people are going to be running this card a lot more than not these days so you guys should absolutely look into it it's a great great card um up next we have the great henge this one is pretty much standard in a lot of mono green decks i think you guys are pretty familiar with this card by now but very powerful it keeps the engine going it keeps your card draw going it keeps you gaining life this card does it all it adds mana to your pool so <clears throat> this was kind of a no-brainer the henge is is super powerful if you're running a lot of creatures like we are um, we want to see the henge on the battlefield because like i said you're just going to be uh, continue churning out value over and over and over again so this card will save you in a lot of games where you're just kind of you played all your creatures they're removing it off the field and now they're starting to play bigger plays like planeswalkers and stuff you need something to continue your hand generation over and over again so the henge is the way to go and finally we have our lands so the lands we have two block thwains five apiece on both swamps and four is two temple i'm sorry four temple of miladies i forgot i had different 
20 and 21s um, and then four triumphs and two fabled passages so that right there is a deck in a nutshell uh we had some really fun games i think we just basically ran through you know platinum pretty fast with this so i'm gonna continue playing this deck up to diamond i think and uh we have some really cool ideas for the next deck as well so stay tuned for that down uh, later down in the week uh, but let's go ahead and get into gameplay footage and then we'll wrap it up back here at the end so we'll see you guys then peace all right here we go we are up to no good with our gold gary list let's do it what do we got oh this is a good hand wish we had a fast green source but this is still pretty good i'll definitely take this let's see video sorry i'm trying to uh deal with some of this video stuff while i'm recording at the same time i should have done it beforehand i know sorry all right temple of lady let's go uh gem razor yeah seems good here got a shadow spear we want to take down right uh let's see what else we got here just some crazy lands let's go ahead and drop a crazy land right now enter tap let's get the shambler down the shambler can be a five five gem razor next turn if we can find a green source a 5-5 five, five gem razor coming in on turn three killing a shadow spear don't mind if i do fortunately we found green unfortunately it's tapped opponent missed a land drop am i going crazy here did we go first can't remember can't remember poker nose one of my favorite cards in all of theros beyond death been dying to play this card for so long now <clears throat> all right let's go ahead and just play this land here we're gonna drop our gem razor onto our shambler like i was stating before kill the uh, shadow spear then we got a 5-5 five, five trampler swinging in hard could have killed the ginger brute obviously it's a uh, you know an artifact but this is a better play <clears throat> i hope i was gonna say i hope they block the gem razor because if they do it has trample so opponent sacrifices their ginger brute for a 2-2 scavenging use hit didn't seem like that big of a big of a hit to be honest but hey we got the w though let's go easy win on the first game that was actually really easy wow all right so game one was really fast uh i didn't expect to win so fast but it did look like our opponent i will give the uh, benefit of the doubt that our opponent did not find their lands so made things tough for them uh they probably kept a two land hand which i can't blame them you should be able to do that every now and then and still hit your land drops but you know arena you know arena keep a two land hand you're asking for death all right well we got a fabled into our green sources we can keep this it's just slow again they need to make a dual land man they need to make a dual land for golgari they need to make all the dual lands if i'm being completely honest I think obviously they will, but I want them now. Let's go here, then drop a Temple of Milady. Nah, we need some uh, more interaction. We need some more creatures. Clean the dust here. Uh, we're up against green though. Weird, I thought for sure we'd be running into a, a Demir Rogues deck by this point, but. But that uh that fable passage right there is a target for our clean to dust to draw a card so we might actually do that uh on their turn we'll see how this goes uh we might be up against <coughs> selesnia enchants oh scoot swarm okay that was a misplayed scoot swarm if i do say so myself they uh played the land first well actually they had to huh never mind i'm just kidding But it still wasn't a great scoot swarm because they played it before six lands which means it's easily removed um let's see what happens if i swing first i'm happy to make the trade with the shambler so if that's what they want to do i get another one one out of it they lose the scoot swarm happy days all right guess we're gonna have to use this because we can't oh we need to kick it that's annoying that's annoying the Scoot Swarm is just too annoying, though, to have on the field, so got to get rid of it. Didn't want to have to kick that, though. What is going on? Why does nobody want to play, man? Is that really the only card you had to play? Feels bad, man. 
Well, GG's. Man, I swear, it's like whenever I hit my record button, just the craziest stuff happens. Literally the craziest stuff. We get roped to conceding. People just quit on turn three when nothing really happened yet. Crazy. All right, we got a Nissa. This is what I've been waiting for. I really wanted to play Nissa. Um, so we're going to keep this just for that fact. Uh, Great Horn's good to kind of ramp us up. Hopefully we can find another small creature. That'd be ideal. Get to try him down ASAP. Adventurer's Impulse. Uh, look at the top three cards of your library. Maybe a creature or land card from one of them put in your hand. Okay. I'll take that. That's fine. Not that big of a threat. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just tap this in. We need to find some more land. Cobra. No, thank you. I don't want to have to shock myself, but I'm going to bank on the fact that we're going to draw a land here. I hope we don't have to shock ourselves. I'd rather save the awakening to actually play it down the road. <clears throat> We're shocking ourselves. Let's go, champ. Um, we could do the shambler. Nah, 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 nah. Let's just shock this in. We have options here. I think we need to play the Pokernos. Just make them deal with it. Uh, they have one creature in the bin, so that's going to be a 3-3. Three, three. So let's go ahead and play Pokernos. Let's see what they got. <clears throat> playing uh rack or i'm sorry we're playing um oh my gosh my brain is absolutely fried right now i just got off work guys <sighs> bear with me all right is that it is that your big play yep we expected that okay sweet so we can Take something out with the fighting. Hmm. If only I had double green sources here, that'd be great. Maybe we should just Great Horn here. <sighs> yeah. I think Great Horn here. That way we don't miss a land drop. <clears throat> you want to place it over the top because it becomes huge. Uh, let's go green. Swing in, sure. Nine is a lot of damage. Nine is a lot of damage. And then our Great Hand only becomes a two now. Oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. Wow, they have no removal for our Great Horn here. That's that's really good for us. I'll take that trade all day. All right, let's go with the Henge. Fable Passage here. I forgot the Henge gave us green mana. Oh, that's unfortunate. That was a misplay. I could have played uh, Nissa and got the loyalties out of that. Feels bad, man. All right, well, let's go ahead and fight the Mammoth. Uh, drop a Shambler, maybe. Uh, actually, we have the Mythos and Nethroi available to play. So let's just go ahead and swing in for six. They're going to have to deal with the uh, the Great Horn by next turn or they're, you know, they're screwed, so. And we're going to Mythos one of these creatures here on their attacks that probably the scavenging use, obviously. Mythos can destroy any non-land permanent if it's a creature, unless that mana is spent, so. Creatures are fine. We got this all day. Scavenging Ooze is gone. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Oh, wait, what did that do? Oh, no. They pumped it up to 9-9. Nine, nine. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, but not good enough, unfortunately, for them. Um, let's see. We got a 3-3 three, three haste here. We gain life. GG's. GG's. Nissa for the win, guys. God, I've been wanting to play Nissa for so long. I'm glad we finally found a, a slot for her in the uh, the deck. 3-0. Oh. Quick ones, too, man. We're climbing fast. Man, three games, 
three insta wins um i don't know if i can keep up the pace obviously of winning like 100 games in a row so if these games don't slow down this video might have a couple losses in it i'm sure down the road no deck is invincible and i have a feeling ours is not either so you never know though maybe we can keep it going uh this is not an ideal hand i'm gonna mulligan this hand uh better it's better but not great the henge has to stay we need the henge i feel like maybe no ah, god dang it we got to get rid of the henge how unfortunate this could be the game we lose we go first with a mulligan uh always rubs me the wrong way at least we have a way to search for land if we can find that you know that third land hopefully <laughs> Come on, land. Please, please, please. Don't. Don't be a no-show to this party. Please. Here comes the mill. We knew this was coming. That's why we That's why we teched in a few cards that have escape on them. Wow, they just hit four of my... Wow. That's so unfortunate. So unfortunate. At least we drew something that could deal with one of their uh, crabs, which is great, but... Man, oh man, a land would have been way better. We have Mythos and Nethroid too, which can kill the other crab uh, down the road. Let's get that extra point of damage in here. Man, they hit so many lands right there. This is going to be tough. I have a bad feeling about this. I have a bad, bad feeling about this. We're gonna we're gonna miss a lot of land drops. They just hit another forest. They're basics too, so our um, great horn is gonna not have a whole lot of options to pull it from if it hits. Unbelievable. Okay, well, at least we get to kill a crab. At least we get to kill a crab again. Can't be too upset with that. Uh, let's go and swing in with the ooze. No, 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 cancel, sorry. Swinging with the ooze and the ooze alone. We have the option of pumping it, but I'm going to let it just resolve in, and then uh, I'm going to pump up the Shambler to make it stronger. The Shambler, so the way it works is if you use one mana and you tap it, it can uh, generate another 1-1 one, one token on it. Um, yeah, we're going to let that obviously come through. Oh, it's flying. Never mind. Duh. Of course, we're going to let it come through. All right. I'm really glad I threw back uh, a henge because the henge obviously is no good here. They're going to throw down a trickster, aren't they? Oh, wait, they're not the mana for a trickster yet. They need one more land. Oops. Let's turn the music down just a little bit there. All right, they have three mana. I feel like they would have played the fourth mana if they had it, so they're probably locked on mana as well. Man, if I could just find one land, this great horn would be so good. They play the wind robber, which can also mill. We have three blood chiefs thirst in here, right? Yeah, three of them, so got to rely on our mythos here for removal. Activate the ability. Now we have two decent threats. Um, if we swing in with this uh, Shambler, though, they're probably more than happy to block with the Wind Robber and draw a card off of it more than likely. <sighs> Dang, we have a we're in we're in a bad spot. We're in a bad spot to say the least. Oh man! Oh man! Oh man! At least we're beating them to the the health game. At least we're beating him there. I don't know how we're how we're gonna make it out of this, to be honest though. Not looking good, guys. Not looking good. Not much we could have done though. We did our best. Will they block? Will they block this? Nope. They're gonna go and take the damage. Fair enough. 
And then the Shambler can also use the Swamp to gain one more token, and then it can become an actual threat on the board to attack with, and we don't have to worry. We're gaining life, too, every time we use the Scavenging uh, News, which is really nice, so. And turn. We have a lot of targets in our graveyard as well, like the Gem Razor. Or maybe just, oh, we have two. We have two targets that we can hit for uh, the Scavenging Ooze to get it even bigger. Who knows, maybe, maybe we can win this entire game just by pumping our Scavenging Ooze. They do have things, though, like Drown in the Lock, which is probably coming out right now, which is why they highlighted the Ooze. Okay, oh, that's kind of a land. I don't want to tap land, though, so that's fine. I'm looking for something fast, maybe a Fable Passage or any other land. All right, they don't have double blue, which means they can't play uh, Brazen Borrower as a creature yet. Damn. Damn. Ah. Well, that's no good. Well, that just is no good. Will we find the land? Stay tuned next time on Dragon Ball Z. Trying to activate that ability seemed pretty hard. Oh, we hit the land. We hit the land. We hit the land. Oh, we're going to get countered, aren't we? We're going to get countered, aren't we? Oh, thank God. Thank God. We're hitting him for seven here. That's huge. Huge. If they let us resolve that when they had a drown in the lock in their hand, they're going to feel really silly. I was going to say, if they kill it right now and let me get that land out, that would be really bad, bad play. Now we have Nissa, who brings out a 3-3 haste creature. So even if they take care of the board here and they think they're safe, Nissa can always come up and surprise them, which is awesome. All right, what are the odds they drew a counter spell now? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, pretty good. Pretty good odds, huh? At least we can come in with the Migratory Great Horn. I feel very comfortable here. Uh, and uh, they're gonna have to chump block it. Probably with the Wind Robber drawing a card. Uh, not great, not great. That was probably not the play. Honestly, though, we would have been countered no matter what we played. So, yeah, we would have been countered either way. So, nothing we could have done there. We probably should have swung in first, though. Maybe bait them into doing something else. But then we wouldn't have been able to get the 3-3, three, three, though. So, yeah, no, there was just nothing we could do there. Shambler could be good because we can actually put another Great Horn on it. I can't believe how close this game is. We were playing with two land for how long? Opponent's starting to rope. Maybe out of anger, because they don't have the cards they need to win, hopefully. All right, timeout used. I always like to do this to try to uh, get them going. You see my little birdie changing colors? You awake there? All right. Let's do that. Wind Robert blocks, sacks. Yep, we know that's coming. Wish I had Trample, man. That'd be sweet. If we could find a Gem Razor, that'd be awesome. But at least with the Shambler, we could play it and get a Great Horn on it, which makes another threat that's really hard to deal with. So I'm happy with that. Um, we could too, we could try to swing in here and then just play the Mythos and Nethroi um, on Soaring Thought Thief. But if they leave their mana open more than likely, we know they've got, they've got what they need. That's fine, it's not the end of the world losing the Shambler. They probably did that because they knew we scryed to the top. All right, they're definitely flashing in a blocker now, we know that. And we could kill it with Nethroi and we win the game, right? Let's try it. Let's try it. See what happens. Swing in both. Okay. Okay. 
Let's try it. Let's try it. Does it resolve? Does it resolve? Does it resolve? Nope. Nope. At least we drew out another card on him. Drew out another card, got one point of damage, and I can't be too upset about that. Uh, let's go with another land here. What was that card? I've actually never seen anyone use that before. Shield, uh, shell seal, shield. Wow, it's a tongue tie. Target creature you control gets O3. This dispels kick creature also gains hexproof. Interesting. How much does it cost to kick? Is that a good card? That might be a good card, guys. Whoa! They just kicked that too, didn't they? Guess who just got trampled? Guess who just got trampled? Guess who just got trampled? This guy. This guy. Guess who just got trampled? This guy. This guy. I can't believe we won that game. <laughs> I can't believe we actually won that game. Let's go, champ. Yo, I can't lie, guys. It's pretty refreshing with this new ban that just happened, man, recently, because decks just seem to be flowing out a lot easier these days. The magic meta is actually not completely busted. Uh, so it feels good. It feels really good. Uh, I love the Shambler into the Great Horn. I feel like that's one of our best starts we can have with a couple interaction cards. Can't be mad at this. Can absolutely not be mad at this. Opponent's highlighting the card. They might not have seen this one before, which kind of gives me hope that the Great Horn on top with the 1-1 counter is uh, something they haven't experienced, not prepared for. What the f- what the f- Bro! I swear, man, I- These are not paid actors, I swear. I cannot stress enough that I have no idea what's going on. It's literally every time we record, it's it's actually insane. Every time we record, we get the weirdest wins. Like, like why queue into a game if that's what you're going to do? <laughs> they see this a shambler and they go, oh shit. Concede. Oh man. People are funny. People are funny. All right, we go first. Let's go. Wait, do we go first? No, they're up first. Ugh, man. I'm tired. I went to work, got off work. My cousin called me. He goes, bro, we got to go try out this new skate park. Let's go. I'm like, all right, let's go. It was hot. It was 100 degrees. And I'm exhausted now. And to top it off, I fell really, really hard on a spot that I fell on last week and i'm very sore to say the least my wife really wants me to stop skating she's like you're too old for that and i'm like you know what you're only as old as you act and i don't act very old I'm very childish so let me skate oh man am i gonna have to make an edit here i hate having to make notes on edits come on guys all right, apparently we're back. Let's give this a shot. I don't know what the heck is happening right now. I really, really don't have any clue what in the world is going on. I don't know if we're going to be roped again. People just love to ruin my YouTube videos, man. I'm trying to show these people how this deck runs. Well, I got to see Nissa once. I haven't even got to use the hen jet. Come on now. Give the people what they want. Magic. I'm going to keep emoting, bro. I'm going to keep emoting until we get some action here. All right. Let's go. Thank goodness. Oh, you're going to say hello all casual back now? Oh, hello casually back to me? How about you pay attention? I can't lie. I've, I've, you know, I've had my roping moments. I've had to use the restroom or like someone knocks on the door or something and... But never like this, man. Never like the people I see on this game sometimes. It's baffling. It's baffling. Let's go for the skews. Uh, we'll just pass the turnover. Uh, this just a three one, huh? Okay. Interesting. I might 
be willing to block it? Do I care? Do I care if I lose my shambler? Probably not, right? I don't really care. Let's block. If they swing in, of course. They probably won't, though. Oh, now they will. Now they definitely will swing in on me. Okay. Fair enough. Dang, they got that out quick. Alright, Mythos and Nethroi coming your way. Let's go ahead and do it now, or how do we want to do this? How do we want to do this? We could Blood Chief Thirst it, or we could just Nethroi it. I say Nethroi because <clears throat> I don't want to have to kick this if I don't have to. Let's Nethroi. Swing in. That's a two drop, so I can actually kill that with this if I wanted to. Start them over. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do that. That's mana. That's mana. It looks like maybe... Yeah, let's just do that. I need to get that mana off the field. It's a 3-1-2. It's kind of big. We're really hurting on cards, though, unfortunately. Okay, there goes our scoots. We get to hit him for five, though, here. Uh, it's got trample, so... Actually, I might want to just do that instead. Get the land. Get some more value out of it. Um... Oh yeah, I can't even gem razor. I can't even do it because I don't have the proper mana. So we have to go with this route. Go over the top. Get a green source. Now we can gem razor next turn. Let's go in for four. That's an that's a really enticing block too. I wouldn't blame them if they want to take this block to chump it. Um, because they can stop all four points of damage coming through. But they won't be able to use their love struck beast. So that's a tough decision. I cannot lie. Uh, we could draw a card, thank goodness, with the uh, clean the dust. Get some card advantage going. All right. Here comes the beast, of course. They're going to swing in for one here. Not that big a deal, but what else they got for a two drop? Scoos? Oh. Okay. Okay, that's that's fine. Ah, it's not fine. What am I saying? It's not fine at all. It's actually kind of annoying. All right, we got to try them. Let's go. We definitely needed that. All right, we're going to kill the... We'll kill the Love Struck Beast when it comes in. Let's maybe... Just drop the Triome. Yeah, we'll just hold up the Nethroi. Maybe we'll just block with the 1-1 Insect right now. But then the 1-1 Insect kind of gives our Gem Razor haste, you know what I'm saying? So maybe not. Maybe we'll just Nethroi here. I was thinking about holding up the mana to just clean the dust again. But maybe we'll just Nethroi this. Nethroi will be seeing ya. Opponent's down to two cards and a Rider, so that's good for us. Another gem razor. I'm not mad at the gem razor. I'm really not, but yeah, it's got trample. Let's go ahead and go in and get the pressure on. It's awkward though, because it leaves us with three mana. We're one short for the uh, clean the dust, which is kind of frustrating. But at least with the gem razor, he comes in with basically haste, uh, swinging in for four. They're down to 11 health right now, so they could absolutely want to block this. Uh, but we have trample, so. Get some damage across if they just want to block with the Murderous Rider. But then they gain two, so it's really like they're gaining one out of the whole deal. Maybe they should have considered blocking there. Murderous Rider blocks, they gain two out of the... Or one out of the whole deal. That's a pretty good card. Oh, boy. Okay. How do we deal with that? Maybe we draw a card off of this. That's probably cheaper and easier and more efficient. Let's do that. That's solid. I can bring back one, two, three creatures. Um, No attacks, obviously. We're going to hang back, hang low. Okay, well, 
how do we do this? So we got one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four. So yeah, we can bring back all three of these. That's pretty solid. It's really solid, actually. Wish I could have played this this turn. That would have been nice. But I would have had to shock this in for land. And then I wouldn't be able to play it. Uh, no blocks. And what's nice, too, about the play I'm about to do here is that when I bring back those things, I can actually gem razor on top of migratory, which is good. This can be chump blocked, which is really nice. So let's just go ahead and pull it off now. Let's go do this. So we're going to go for a four here. Auto pay. Here we go. Mammoth. Uh, I prefer you as the land, to be honest, right now. Uh, going in. Four damage is a lot. They definitely need to consider blocking this now. Um, putting me pretty much close to lethal, depending on how we block our next turn. We can actually block with the Shambler, champ blocking it and getting another 1-1, one, one, which we can gem raise around to. That'd be sweet. That would actually be really nice. Clean the Dust is also a tool for us to gain life with if we decide to go that route. How much life do we get though? Three. That's pretty good. That's actually really good, especially in this situation. We got ourselves a barn burner, people. Got ourselves a barn burner. We have trample, so feels bad. That could have actually been used to chump block something down the road, so that was a mistake on their part. Attack step? Okay, beautiful. Here we go. Uh, Shambler's definitely blocking. Please, nothing tricky that gives haste or anything. Okay, sweet. Oh, we don't. Uh, we weren't the target of a spell. Never mind. That was silly. Okay, well, I need to save up three for. Okay, so let's go one. I need to make this an actual threat for them to block, and then. Ay, ay, ay. What do we do here? Um, what do we do here? I think we. We give this trample with this. Yeah, I think that's the play. I think that's the play. I'm not doing any math in my head though, which could honestly end up backfiring so hard on me. All right, let's go. Three on top. That makes it an eight, eight or seven, seven, seven. What the hell am I talking about? Oh, I did not know that was an enchantment. I did not know that that creature was an enchantment. Oh my god. See guys, you could be dumb and even play this deck. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there it is. I knew it was coming sooner or later. <laughs> I got I can't lie guys. I got so lucky there. I had no idea that that was an enchantment I forgot that that's basically the annex of that deck or of green cards Unbelievable. We got we got hella lucky there for sure GG's All right, here we go. This is gonna be the final game of the recording Unfortunately yesterday was uh, the other part of the recording that you guys were seeing uh, I had to step away because dinner was ready and uh now we're on day number two, but uh, I do remember we were kind of like killing it with this deck, like kind of flying up the ladder pretty quickly. So this probably gonna be our last game though. I think we were at like 30 something minutes. So I like to be at around 35, 40 minutes for the gameplay footage for you guys. So this will probably be the last one here. Man, I've been having a lot of fun with this deck though. And I actually, uh, over the days, the course of the day though, I've thought of a better card, I think, for uh, the Swarm Shambler, and I can't wait to tell you guys more about it at the end, but um, I think that uh, Stone Coil Serpent would actually be a better <clears throat> card and replacement for the Shambler, so we'll definitely talk about it, though. I'm going to have to play test it myself. Temple of Belated. Ooh, another Shambler? Probably not. We need to get some more uh, interactions. Maybe some Gem Razor action. If this is going to be a mill deck, we're going to need to get rid of a Teferi's Tutelage. 
you never know, but Demir typically means mill, so. We get our little 1-1, one, one, which is the only downside to running, uh, if we do decide to go with the Stone Coil Serpent, we don't actually get the added benefit of getting another 1-1 one, one on the field, so. There's always that to be concerned about. Well, they misplayed that, I feel like. They could have played the crab probably first. I don't know. I don't know. All right, let's get this down. Let's definitely kill the crab, because that's going to be a problem. And then the scoos. Get down the old scoos. Get some damage in. Uh, the scoos is going to be great if we can get some tokens, 1-1 one, one tokens on it, because then we can drop the... Uh, well, actually, I'm sorry. There's no mutate on poker nose. What am I saying? But if we do decide to mutate on the scoos, <clears throat> it'd obviously be a lot better if we can get some 1-1 one, one counters on it. Why don't I think poker nose mutating? You take one day off, man. Your brain just decides to stop working. All right, no land. That's a problem. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to play the Shambler. Going to get in for one. And then we're going to end step our cling to dust <clears throat> to draw a card. We could have probably done the cling to dust on our turn just to see if we could hit that land drop. Um, but I guess it didn't really matter either way. Um, all right. Seems like a waste of a drown in the lock, if you ask me. They're just wasting some big hitter removal spells on our shamblers, which I'm a okay with. Got the fabled passage. Got the lock, Thwain. Let's go. Get down the poker nose. Six six. Gonna be really hard to deal with. Shouldn't have wasted all your big removals. I'm just kidding. They probably got another blood chief stir. They probably got it all. <clears throat> Not a big deal though. It has reoccurrence from the graveyard from uh, exiling six other cards. Wow, are they really gonna let this go through? I'm half tempted to drop a gem razor on top of it and swing in for a, a crap ton, but something tells me they have instant speed removal. So let's go ahead and just get in for the eight points of damage. Uh, I should have done it. I should have done it. That's unfortunate. All right, let's drop this. Let's Blood Chief's Thirst. Let's just not give them anything on the battlefield. And then next turn, we will... Oh, okay. They just don't want to see anymore. Next turn, I was going to drop the Gem Razor on top of it, uh, making it a 10-10 and uh, with Trample. That's always nice and juicy. <laughs> All right, GG's. I think that's going to wrap up the gameplay footage. That's the games guys. I hope you guys really really enjoyed this video. I know I did um, It was a uh, very easy to play deck. It had a lot of cool Options to uh, different play lines that you could take with it and I felt like it was a lot a lot of fun um, Let's go ahead and just talk about the one Card that I think I might change to this deck and that is the shambler the shambler came through big time for us So it's kind of hard for me to make this decision here, but I I do think there's a place for Shambler to be a Stone Coil Serpent. Uh, the Stone Coil Serpent is a really good option because if we get Shambler in the late game, it's not really that good or useful to us because it's a one drop one one and we, we don't want to wait for its summoning sickness to wear off so we can start pumping it up. It's just kind of a dead card at the end of the game. But you know what's not is the Serpent because the Serpent, if we actually find it towards the end of the game we can make it even bigger and it's also a really really good target for our mutations so that right there is the only thing i have to say about the deck other than that it played pretty much perfect so i'd love to hear you guys' thoughts as always down below in the comments if you have any ideas for the deck if you like the deck everything that you could possibly comment that you want to talk about i'm here to talk to you guys and uh hear you guys out and i'm also you know interested in any ideas that you might have so please please share and uh i think that's gonna wrap up this video guys i want to say to those who are still here at the end with me i really do appreciate you and i have a special place in my heart for you guys for making it this far into the videos and supporting the channel the way you guys do day in and day out so thank you thank you thank you and i hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day or weekend whenever you see this and we'll catch you guys on the next one peace